the action is with technology. There is not a cookie cutter approach to this. Really embrace and leverage technology. Massive mainframe data center complexes. Everything about our lives is being digitized and saved. Unix is about as sexy as a Russian tank. Cybersecurity assessments, intrusion analysis. Radical changes in technology. Going to GTC helps us see the future. Hey, happy, happy 20th, 20th anniversary, anniversary GTC. GTC. So we're planning on having a big party. GTC is our opportunity to bring the best and the brightest to Albany, New York. If you're told that it cannot be done, or if you're told that you cannot do it because it just never has been done, we'll challenge that status quo. Buying the stuff is easy, whether it's hardware or software. It's making it work, that's the hard part. Managing innovation, managing people, managing contracts. When it began, there were 12 vendors. Mac, 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 Cedra. 20 years ago, you know, we were just starting to face the paradigm of the citizen with a PC. We won't need as much brick and mortar. And that was our first big foray into showing off our wares for government. Electronic filing and networks to store and share any document. From a humble beginning to where it is today, it's uh, fascinating to look back. In the early days as I looked around, you know, I saw, saw technology people. I mean, I saw, you know, kind of you know, nerds like me. Happy 20th anniversary, GTC. Well, in about 1987, I met a, a young guy, Brian Lee, who had recently moved to California from Albany, New York. Brian had come to California to take over Xerox business for the state of California. 1987, I'm uh, living in Sacramento, California. I'm on the uh, industry advisory board at something called GTC and I was much impressed with the quality of the conference. Well, we had recently started publishing a magazine, Government Technology, which was the first state and local information technology magazine. And Brian really felt that a technology conference, an event that really focused on the use of technology in New York State government, would be very valuable. So I said, I know of a nice place called Albany, New York, and here are 20 people you can contact who are involved with uh, government. So lo and behold, a year later, there's a conference. And now, 20 years later, here we are. You were just seeing a lot of empowerment of the desktop happening. And as the desktop became empowered, then the individual government professional, they could start getting real creative and do a lot of different things. There were some early days where we were putting together things on the fly, uh, trying to get with substance as quickly as we could. I'd already worked for the state for five years, I think, before the first PC landed on my desktop, and it had uh, you know, 64 meg of, of RAM, as I recall. I remember hearing for the first time about GIS, for the first time about distance learning you know, back in the late 80s, and it was all very exciting to me. In, in 89, I was, uh, I was a member of Unisys Corporation. We were a mainframe company that was trying to get into many computers and personal computers, trying to battle the uh, the, the big bad IBM. There was only a few IT vendors and so the agencies and the customers would either be on an IBM mainframe, a Unisys mainframe, they'd build all their applications out. Then as the industry evolved into a client server model, there was many new competitors bringing many new wonderful solutions to our customers. When the PC was first introduced, people didn't know what it was. It's great, what is it? The ways of technology. The big mainframe phase. Watts lines. Mini computers. Data lines. WANs. Lease lines. WANs. Massive storage farms. 40 pound portable luggable computers. You could dislocate your shoulder carrying one of these things. Routers. Dumb terminals. Hubs. Modems. Bridges. These technologies at the time were exciting. 20 years ago, running an agency, we didn't even use email. So I can't imagine anything that's changed more than technology. But one of the things I think we worked very hard on, and we can see the success of it now, is a very healthy interaction between the public and private sectors. We were writing these programs where we called them client-server at the time, although they were really multi-tiered, where the program would call an application on the server and, and return some data, that program would exchange information within its own uh, function hierarchy and call another program on another server. That those RPCs is really the start of what we today call service-oriented architecture. The business model today is dramatically changing for companies. We want open industry standard-based and then people need to innovate on top of that. So it's really raising the bar for everybody. Open standards and government has been the key organization to drive our industry toward open standards. This human factor is going to be critical in the future and the collaboration 
uh, that occurs with people. CIOs need to be a lot of things today. They need to be able to drive change. They need to be able to drive in innovation. They need to be able to manage. They need to have good fiscal skills. They need to have good strategic planning skills. They need to be able to understand technology enough that they can manage the vendor community to deliver on what's being invested in. Yeah, a good application is not a good application unless you have infrastructure to run it on. The state's starting to lose the people that are accepting the inflexible policies and accepting the way things are as they're popping out the other end and retiring how this next generation, this generation of digital natives, uh, uh, deals with and thinks about technology compared to how we digital immigrants think about it. I don't think you're going to see the young people of today tolerating, when they you know, take the jobs that we've had, tolerating how archaically we use technology. If they can't have an interactive instant gratification, then it's irrelevant to them. It's too slow. Even email is too slow the social networking aspects of Web 2.0 really won't need to be taught to this generation. They come in and they understand it, they got it, they know how to use it, as opposed to using that construct trying to train some of our older workers. Several years back, when we were doing the modernization at tax, we were looking for some software to help with our discovery. We always send a lot of people down, a lot of programmers, and one of the programmers, a young woman that had stopped at one of the booths because they were giving away boxer shorts. And in order to get the boxer shorts, she had to listen to this spiel. Turned out the product had to be very good. So she found me, we went back, we looked at it. We were the first sale for that company in the state. And it turned out to be the platform for tax, for human services, and a number of other agencies. It's 20 years later and they're still using that same solution. Today, 2008, every grandparent 80 years of age is sending pictures all over the world uh, through the internet. But in 1995, this was Lewis and Clark kind of territory. How do you, quote unquote, how do you control the runaway end user? You know, there was concern about controlling of information. They don't even use the term data center as they talk about their future vision. They use terms such as uh, multiplex technology centers. Coach Carter was my favorite keynote. I just think uh, his whole message around education and what he did at Richmond High. P.K. Agarwal. Costas Terregas. Professor Negroponte from MIT. Robert Kriegel. Shuttle Commander Rick Searfoss. David Poe. Yeah, I mean, he was just he was dynamic. one of the best. It's a cell phone that gets unlimited free calls. After the uh, session, I did go back and have his Grand Central account. My phones are all, you know, plugged in. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, it, it, it actually works. And it's free. It's free. Clay Jenkinson portraying Thomas Jefferson and Teddy Roosevelt. I was the first president to ride in an airplane. Was Neil Peterson's um, keynote last year. It's not about what you have. It's about what you construct. It's about what you do with your skills and your resources. It's not about the fancy components. Just truly inspiring and I, I think moved a lot of the people uh, who were there. The very first one, James Burke, I thought was just marvelous. Hi, I'm James Burke and in the past I've done a number of keynotes for the conference, so I'd very much like to be there on this, the 20th anniversary. But as you can see, unfortunately, just at the moment I'm forced to tough it out here in the south of France. I see you have a productive and stimulating session ahead of you, so let me wish the event every success and, of course, a happy 20th anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary, GCC.